future men together. It's time to invade the G.I. Joe collection and rebuild it from scratch. Ladies and gentlemen, the only man crazy enough to take on this mission, G.I. Jason. Get ready to lock and load with G.I. Jason as he presents Collecting is Half the Battle. Lock and load, people. Move out! Hello, everybody. Jason of New Age Revolution down here in the G.I. Joe pit for another episode of Collecting is Half the Battle. That's right. We are down to one more figure for 1985 and then 1983, 1984, 1985 figure line will be complete. We have acquired uh, all of 83, 84, and 99.9% .9 of 1985 because no, this is not the way it was shipped. This is, you know, the way it was packed. Uh, it was shipped in a box. That's good. But um, we have acquired the second to last 1985 figure. And if you've been scoring at home, or if you're by yourself, you recall that we need eels and the very elusive and expensive Listen and Fun Tripwire. So I think it's safe to assume that the second to last figure will be Eels. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Eels has joined the new 80s Revolution family. He's a little, little wobbly. Um, I don't think this is, I don't think this is the, the um, O-ring. I think this is just the leg joints. The legs are a little, I don't know, I might replace... Yeah, I'll probably replace the O-ring on this guy if he doesn't stand too well. Uh, but there is Eels. Don't worry, Eels is complete. Eels has a great deal of accessories. Um, we have we have some flippers. We have his weapon. There we are. We have his uh, his air tank, and we have his. Uh, air hose, his his uh, mouthpiece or whatever. We might be missing. We are. We are missing um, his uh, air tanks. I believe the air tanks go on uh, the air pack. Uh, that's okay. We'll get them. We will get them. Um, I am going to move on from this figure. I will. I will consider, uh, well, uh, I'll mark him off in the, in the notebook. We're going to, we're going to mark it as, uh, in need of the air tank. So we'll grab those. We'll grab them quickly, probably from my friends at Yojo Outlet. Uh, but, um, we got eels and that means we are on to listen and fun tripwire. Now, I uh, mistakenly uh, misremembered that uh, the, um, the accessories that come along with Listen In Fun Tripwire were the same color as the original figure, a, a uh, grayish color. So I was going to get a, a, uh, a bare bones Listen and fun tripwire for probably a hundred bucks or so, and then grab the listen and fun uh, and grab the original tripwires, weapons, accessories, and just complete the figure that way. But oh no, 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 it was pointed out to me, and I then remembered that the listen and fun tripwires accessories are almost white in color, like a very light, creamy gray white color. There's eels on his stand, ready to join the shelf. Um, so, what I will do is, uh, I will somehow try to get this attached. Yeah, this is, 
I don't know where the air hose actually goes here, so we're just going to put it on this little notch in the backpack. That'll be good enough. Um, what I'm going to do is there is a wonderful, uh, you know, company or store or person on eBay that sells uh, very nice, very perfect repros, right? Reproductions of the uh, Listen and Fun accessories. Um, and that's going to be okay with me because uh, that it's a very expensive figure. I want to get it uh, sooner than later so that I can move on with 1986 because we are well, well established in 1986. We already have uh, probably, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight figures already for 1986 just sitting in a little baggie over here. Um, incomplete. Here we are. Including, uh, no, not including my favorite figure. Big Boa is not in this line. Uh, but here we are. A, a, a big old baggie of, of 1986 figures. Um, just waiting, waiting for their own shelf. We get to add another shelf. 1985, 84, and 83 have pretty much fit on three shelves. Uh, Eels is going to take up the last space on the 85 shelf, so we'll have to add Listen and Fun up on the 86 shelf. That's okay. We'll add another one. Uh, and, and the 86 figures are going to take up two shelves because there's a lot. There's a lot of figures. Um, not as many as 87. 87 is huge. And I didn't even write down 88 and 89 yet. Uh, 87 is extremely deep. I'm just estimating by looking at my notebook here. Maybe 45 figures, maybe 50 figures. Uh, there's there's 1987. So that's going to be, that's going to take a while. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're moving on. We're moving on in 1985. We're moving on to listening fun. Hopefully get that knocked off soon. And then on we go to uh, 86. If you saw the uh, the trip to G.I. Joe Ron's, you know that I grabbed the the uh, the Dragonfly. And so I'm basically just looking for a Mobat box and a Dragonfly box. Um, probably hard to find. Definitely hard to find. Um, so we'll, we'll try to, uh, I don't know, I, that might be a situation where I buy the Mobat uh, with box and then sell the Mobat or gift the Mobat and same with the Dragonfly. Uh, every once in a while you'll catch an empty box on eBay and um, and I can get it that way, but usually not. Alright, so that's that. 1985 is almost done. We have one figure to go. We will get it uh, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon, I'm actually going to start looking tonight and, and adding some things to the watch list. I've got about 140 YouTube dollars coming in uh, like 10 days. Uh, so thank you, of course, for watching. Uh, the amount of views is directly correlated with the amount of money that I get. Um, the channel right now is averaging about 80 dollars a month. Um, when I first started monetizing the channel, I was getting $19 a month. So it was taking five months to cash out at $100 because that's how YouTube pays you. They pay you um, when you get to your first $100. So it was taking me months to get 100 bucks. Now it's, you know, not. Now it's taking two months to get 100 plus. What I'd ultimately like to do is have the channel making $100 a month. Um, and then every month I would be basically getting free money to go and buy something fun and, and show it off here. Um, the vow is to always put the money back into the channel. So I'm never going to, you know, put gas in my car or, or pay the water bill with the YouTube money. Um, it's going to go back into stuff. And because it's usually a higher amount... Like now, $145. Um, there's a couple of neat things that I'm watching in eBay that are higher priced, um, including Listen and Fun, uh, and including a Remco uh, carded uh, Remco AWA figures as well. So could be fun. Um, hopefully, we can get up to $100. Just more views will get us up to 100 bucks uh, a month, and we'll keep it at that average. 
All right, the second part of the show, I'm going to flip it around and, and show you something that I've done over in Video Game Corner, and then we're going to talk about uh, what's upcoming on the channel. So stay tuned for the second part of this video. All right, guys, different corner of the room, Video Game Corner right behind me, and as you can see, it looks a little different, and it looks a little exciting. Uh, I came down here the other day, and I decided to rework the NES games. And what I did was instead of having them stacked, you know, book style, right, I stacked them like this. And instead of having them pushed back in the shelf, I pulled them forward. Okay, so what we get is this really, really attractive uh, look, okay? Um, and it saved me a ton of space, right? I cleared up one, two, three, four shelves just by stacking them this way. And um, it, it, not only did I gain shelf space, not only is it visually appealing, aesthetically appealing, if you will, it is motivating. It is inspiring, right? I Some of these things I, I forgot about. They were hiding behind other stuff and things and I had Atari games in front of Nintendo games. We can't have that. So what did we do? Well, we moved the Atari games to these little 99 cent uh, plastic tubs and we got them stacked right next to the Zenith 3. Because the Atari is set up, the NES clone is set up, and my brand new Sega Genesis Model 2 is set up and running because today, through Amazon, I just got the, um, the Sega Genesis Model 2 AV uh, adapter. So instead of hooking up to the antenna of the Zenith 3, we've got it hooked up to the uh, modulator, AV style. And it's beautiful. It is beautiful. G.I. Joe Ron came through as usual. We've got a great working Sega Genesis. Um, cleaned out some of the controllers. Some of the buttons were sticking a little. Took it all apart. Got the Q-tips and the rubbing alcohol. Good as gold. Well, also what I did, if you recall, um, I told the story about... Um, well, I kind of lost... I, 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 I lost interest in the NES games. This was a huge collection obsession for a while. And I had a beautiful list going, like a like an 18 page list, all highlighted every game that I had. And the particular list that I had um, would also rank, not rank the games, but it would, it would um, well, they were in alphabetical order, but there was also, there's, there was also a column where it talked about the rarity of the game, right? So if it was like one star, it was a very common game, five stars, you know, forget about it, you can't find it. And so that's how, my wife would buy me Nintendo games for Christmas and my birthday as she would look at the rarity and she wouldn't waste time looking at like the fours and fives. So she used my list to pick off Christmas presents for me. Well, I left the list at a video game convention that I went to, left it on the table of a, of a seller. And after that happened, I was like, hmm, you know, I don't even know what I have anymore. I don't even know how many I have. Uh, you know, and I stopped asking for Nintendo games for Christmas and birthday and things. And then my Nintendos broke. And then I stopped playing Nintendo. And I kind of forgot about these guys. In fact, there was kind of a floating idea in my head a few months ago to, to sell all 425 whatever Nintendo games. And then I rearranged them. I simply rearranged them. And now I want to play. And I got my Hyperkin, and it plays some good Nintendo games. So I'm playing my Nintendo games again. And, and Liam is down here enjoying, you know, he, he was all into Nintendo like three years ago. That's all he ever wanted to do before we got into the PS4 and the Switch. He would come down here, he'd play Battletoads and all that fun stuff. So um, the, the, the interest in the NES games is uh, back. And with that, my list is back. That's right. My list is back. It's not my original list, but it's a list, and I've already started highlighting, as you can see, I've already started highlighting the games that I have, right? We're going through it. I've only done one, two columns. <laughs> Next to the Jason mask, I did that column. Next to that, I did that column. And now I've got to start column three, shelf one. Okay, so we've got 
a lot of games to go through and highlight and find and, and you know, check off. Then I'll do a, an official count and I'll finally know if it's 417 or 420 or 430. I'll finally know how many games I got. More importantly, if I'm at the flea market, if I'm at a garage sale, if I'm at a toy store, what games do I need? I carry my list with me everywhere I go. Again, I used to just keep this thing in my car. Um, and then I know what games I got. Maybe we'll get some more for Christmas and birthday and Easter and all that fun stuff. Well, where you guys come in is uh, I want to do my top 10 favorite NES games. And we've talked about this a little while ago, too. We'll, uh, we'll probably do it in two parts, you know, because I want to, you know, play a little of the game with you uh, as I unveil my top 10. And uh, obviously it's going to be games that I own. Um, and so we'll do a, we'll do a top 10 Nintendo list again, probably in two parts. So that's coming. So I wanted to give you that update. I think this shelf looks awesome. Um, it just looks good this way. Uh, Liam came down here and he's like, wow, it looks like a, you know, a game store. And it does. It looks like, like a used video game store that happens to have a gazillion Nintendo games. All right. Uh, one more quick thing. Um, so, uh, the Vintage Horror Show, VHS, uh, we're going to be doing, hopefully in the next couple of days, we'll cook or maybe some takeout, uh, come down here and watch a uh, homebrew VHS tape of um, a bunch of stuff, but what we'll watch is Amazing Stories, one of the old... Uh, Kind of, kind of the Twilight Zone style, you know, Tales from the Dark Side. Um, I think it was on NBC on, on Sunday nights on uh, and, uh, like 80, 87, 88. So we'll watch, uh, we'll watch an episode of that and we'll eat together. But, but my friend, friend of the channel, Hungarian guy, um, is he Hungarian? I don't know. Is he from Hungary? I don't know. Is he hungry? Maybe. Hungarian guy suggested, hey, since you do a vintage horror night, why don't you do a vintage Saturday morning? Yes. And I immediately said, oh yeah, because my brain just flowed with it. So, possibly starting this Saturday morning, we're going to get up together. We're going to get our jam jams on. We're going to go into the kitchen. We're going to pour us a bowl of Frosted Flakes or whatever cereal of the week because there's going to be a new cereal every single week. Or maybe I get crazy and I just cook up some bacon and eggs or whatever. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to bust open my vault of retro 80s uh, cartoons on DVD, and we'll dig into the cartoons of Saturday morning. That's right, we'll watch together, we'll review, we'll talk about, we'll eat, we'll eat some fun Saturday morning food, we'll be bundled up in the robe, in the jammies, have the slippers on, we'll come down here and we'll do Saturday mornings right, just like we used to back in the day. So, in addition to Vintage Horror Night, we've got Retro Saturday Morning, that's a working title. I'll probably change it up, but you get the idea. We're going to do my top 10 video games. PACW, the arena is under construction. Where has it been? You said that we'd be doing the final round, Sheik versus Steamboat. We are. We are. The arena is under a little bit of construction. It's got a new look coming in the next few days for the final match of the first round. We got Vintage Horror Night. We've got, uh, what else are we doing? I don't know. Wrestling with the Past. We're going to get down here and watch, uh, continue that series. Uh, just, just onward and upward, ladies and gentlemen. The channel is, uh, the channel is more fun than it's ever been. So uh, that's, that's, all, that's all I had. That's the update. Uh, I'm going to grab the highlighter and, uh, and start working through more of these. It's a tireless effort. It pains me. But I'm going to do it. Do it for you. Do it for me. Good night now.